Over the course of a game being made, its characters will be evolved and improved before the developers settle on a final perfect design. It's like how the early versions of me had less good hair and a different accent. Sometimes these early iterations of game characters are lost and forgotten forever, like my teenage haircuts, hopefully. But sometimes these abandoned character designs are sneakily immortalised as sly little Easter eggs to commemorate what might have been. Join us now on a delicious Easter egg hunt for the video game Easter eggs that reveal lost versions of our favourite characters. There were spoilers for these games. seconds, Jack. Okay. If there's one thing that time travel TV show slash video game Quantum Break had going for it, it was star power. There was Merry or Pippin, Lieutenant Hardass from The Wire, and of course, Aidan Gillen doing one of his wonderful and very real accents. What is this? The corridor. The passenger enters one end, travels around the loop, exits the other, and arrives at the predetermined time in the physical location where the machine is situated in that time. Swedish? Maybe? Rounding out the cast was Canadian actor Sean Ashmore as main character Jack Joyce, a guy who discovers that he can manipulate time and that his old friend Paul Serene is up to some shady stuff and also has become Swedish maybe. Shut up and bring it in. <sighs> Jack didn't always look like this however. In the very first trailer for Quantum Break from E3 2013, Jack had an entirely different face and voice, mostly because he was played by an entirely different actor. Doctor, you're the only one who can fix this. I don't know the science, but I know the guy who murdered Will is using you. As development went on, the actor, Sean Durry, was replaced by a more box office friendly Sean. But that doesn't mean he didn't turn up in the finished game, as we can see here in the game's opening cutscene, in which he appears as a cab driver, who drops Sean Ashmore off so that he can go on his exciting adventure across time. Hey, thanks for the ride. No problem. Damn, Remedy, that's cold. Still, the developers made it up to the actor by giving him a pretty major role in their next game, Control, in which he plays the main character, Z brother. You are Bill and Faden's sister. He's talking in the third person. Hang in there, Sean Durry. We're getting there slowly. Three more games and you'll be the protagonist. This isn't what I was expecting. That's why they call it a surprise, dumbass. Quit squirming. Tattooing is a human custom that's been around for millennia and used for myriad purposes. Sometimes decorative, sometimes symbolic, and sometimes, like in my case, to remind me to buy some milk. Well, I couldn't find a pen. For the character of Jack from Mass Effect 2, tattoos have all these meanings and more. Which is why she's absolutely covered in them except her face, because even a telekinetic super criminal has to draw the line somewhere. You do this a lot? Early on, yeah. Trying to cover up the Cerberus crap. Hard to keep your hands steady while you're doing yourself, though. When you first meet Jack, springing her from a Turian prison ship, you find she is an extra powerful human biotic who has had her rough and tumble history inked all over her body. Or at least all the parts of her body you can see, which is most of them. Jack's tattoos record her early days as a secret science experiment, her time spent in space prison, and related, her life as a member of a violent space gang. Speaking of that, these faces tattooed on Jack's arm are canonically those of her murdered fellow gang members, memorialised as cool skin art, so says the official art book. But at the same time, they happen to be various faces from concept art for the character of Jack herself, as shared here in a blog post by Mass Effect 2 concept artist Matt Rhodes. So these tattoos also represent how our tat happy squad member might have looked had the designers picked a different path. Which means technically Jack has had her own face tattooed on her body. Which, <laughs> who does that? Not me, as far as you know. Ah! 
As we all now know, the perfect expression of Hideo Kojima's vision for video games is Norman Reedus weighing on a mushroom. Nothing in the tank. It was a long road to get there though, and there were some bumps in that road along the way, such as the ill-fated Silent Hills, Quiet breathing through her skin, and of course, the character of Raiden, who debuted in Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. Intended to be a younger, more attractive character to appeal to a wider audience, Raiden's pretty boy good looks, along with the fact that he spends a not inconsiderable portion of the game running around naked, put off plenty of the players who just wanted to play another game as the gruff, grouchy Solid Snake. Amazing how you walk around like that. Snake! Been waiting long. To be honest though, we should consider ourselves lucky. Designer Yoji Shinkawa's original design for Raiden was reportedly of a creepy weirdo, who crawled on all fours like Spider-Man and, to quote MGS2 production background notes, like to lick bird doo-doo. I did wonder why there are all those seagulls around. So that's why you changed my code name. Right. Never one to let a good idea go to waste, Kojima held on to the design and revisited it in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, where the creepy weirdo with the unusual dietary preferences resurfaced as The Fear, the gross spider soldier of the Cobra unit. It is time for you to feel the fear. I'm... I'm good. Thanks. Still, you can see why they might have decided that this wouldn't go down well with female audiences looking for a new video game crush. I see it! The fear! Fear! So I've left. Claire! It's so nice to see you. How are you doing? That helicopter just came out yeah. of nowhere. I'm in one piece. I'm guessing you don't have a key in one of those fancy pockets? Uh, unfortunately, no. Mm. But how are you doing? The Resident Evil 2 remake updated the survival horror classic in a number of ways, improving the graphics, tweaking the puzzles, and making it possible to install ridiculous mods that ruin all the carefully built tension. Jesus Christ! Or... Actually, I think that's scarier than the original. Another thing it added was some extra costumes for Claire and Leon, available as downloadable content. There was a sheriff's outfit for Leon, military gear for Claire, and noir outfits for both characters. Come on! But the final bonus outfit for Claire was known as the Elsa Walker outfit, which might have been confusing for those without an in-depth knowledge of Resident Evil 2's development history. See, this outfit is actually an easter egg referencing the very first version of Resident Evil 2 that went into development, now known as Biohazard 1.5. In this version of the game, there were two characters to pick from, Leon S. Kennedy, who we all know and love, and Elsa Walker, a 19-year-old college student and motorcycle racer who would have spent the whole game in a set of motorcycle leathers that, now that I think about it, probably would provide pretty decent protection from being munched on by a zombie. Something to like this Elsa. As development went on, Biohazard 1.5 was scrapped in favour of what would go on to become Resident Evil 2, and Elsa became Claire Redfield, the younger sister of the first game's Chris Redfield. That being said, Claire retained most of Elsa's backstory as well as her motorcycle, just not her common sense, as she switched the heavy-duty leathers for a sleeveless denim vest and some jorts. You think that's bad? Just wait till Thomas the Tank Engine shows up. Not here to hurt you. Who are you? Oh sure. You think it's easy to design an iconic heroine from a sky city in an alternate universe, do you? You can't just take a doe-eyed Disney princess, chop off one pinky finger, and stick her in a tower, you know. I come to get you out get of here. Get away! <gasps> Have you even considered whether she's wearing a jacket or not? I didn't think so. In fact, when the makers of Bioshock Infinite were drawing up the character of Elizabeth, that was exactly the kind of question that kept them at their desks late into the night, I imagine. For real though, it was crucial to nail the visual design of the companion character with whom you'd be spending most of the game, since you'd be seeing a lot more of her than the player character Booker, who I guess had brown hair and a face? Nailed it.
Anyway, Liz was the emotional core of the game and needed her outfit to be on point while she was ripping the space-time continuum a new one. Whoa! And so, over the protracted course of development of that game, naturally her appearance was tweaked and refined. You can see one earlier variant of Elizabeth's design in this Bioshock Infinite demo, which is, don't freak out, nearly 10 years old. I've got an idea. Whatever you're doing, do it fast! When the game came out in 2013, Elizabeth had shed the jacket, had had her hair done, and so on, to take on the canonical look of Liz as we remember her. So, looks like they call you the false shepherd. And you the lamb. Let's not call each other that. But then, when things go off in the twist finale of the game, that early version of Elizabeth gets a cameo, alongside several of her alternate universe sisters. It all has to end, to have never started. Are you sisters, if you're from parallel universes? Or twins? Wait, why is Liz always a girl in every universe if Rosalind Lutessa's alternate universe twin is a boy? What does it all mean? Anyone? I want to talk about Bioshock Infinite some more. Yes, in 2019. <laughs> 2018's Sea of Thieves from Studio Rare finally let players live out their piratical dreams, if said dreams mostly involved being the victim of other, better pirates. Turns out, though, that that wasn't Rare's first attempt at making a pirate game, like you might guess from the way it's designed. I'm just angry I'm bad at sword fights. No, Rare's first attempt at a pirate game came way back in the late 1990s with a prototype for a SNES game known as Project Dream. This Project Dream had started out as a fantasy RPG before changing into a piratey adventure as development switched to the N64. In Dream, you were to play as a young man called Edson, who got mixed up with a group of pirates led by the game's main villain, a dastardly buccaneer known as Captain Black Eye. Unfortunately for the captain, but fortunately for everyone else, as development continued, Rare decided that Edson was boring and swapped him out for a bear named Banjo, who was previously a supporting character. They also streamlined the game significantly, getting rid of the pirate theme and focusing on making a fun, quirky platform game instead, which, I mean, it kind of worked out for them, with the game that finally released, 1998's Banjo-Kazooie for the N64, selling nearly 2 million copies. <laughs> But that wasn't the last we'd see of abandoned antagonist Captain Black Eye. Portraits of Captain Black Eye can be spotted in Banjo Kazooie's Mad Monster Mansion stage, but the biggest Easter egg of all is his appearance in Banjo Tooie, where he can be found propping up the bar in the Jolly Rogers Lagoon level. <laughs> Here, Black Eye is little more than a belligerent drunk, but if you bother him enough, he'll regale you with tales of how he used to be in a game, but his glory was stolen by a bear. A bear did it, you say? Uh-huh. I think he's had enough. Well, we're here. <laughs> Don't worry about saying goodbye. I'm sure we'll be doing this all again soon enough. <laughs> ah, get off my bus. Creating concept art for characters takes ages, and sometimes it doesn't even get used. Case in point, this concept art I drew for a new take on Mickey Mouse, which took me all of Tuesday. And all I got was a cease and desist letter from the Walt Disney Corporation. The point is, smart people know to never let any of that hard work go to waste, as we see in the original Borderlands, where several characters in the game are based on early unused designs for the playable Vault Hunters. First off is Reaver, a bandit leader and the target in the mission Two Wrongs Make a Right. Reaver is based on the original design for the Hunter class Vault Hunter Mordecai, a fact you might be able to guess on account of how they share the same taste in headgear. I'm 
Then there's the character of Dr. Zed, the wasteland physician who doles out some of the game's early missions. Something about that haircut just screams soldier class to me. And wouldn't you know it, Zed's design derives from an early version of the soldier vault hunter Roland. Thanks for opening her up again. The name's Zed. They don't let me cut on folks anymore since I lost my license, so now I keep the med vendors around here up and running. Finally, there's Borderlands' main villain, Commandant Steel, a siren who, surprise surprise, started life as the design for the siren vault hunter Lilith, as we can see here in the game's initial announce feature in magazine Game Informer. The contents of the vault are rightfully the property of the Atlas Corporation. But you, <laughs> you belong to me. I guess we should just be grateful that they have so much good concept art to recycle, although they surely must be running low at this point. All I'm saying is, if the final boss of Borderlands 4 is just a stick figure with a big gun, I won't be surprised. Although, Gearbox, if you'd like to use this Mickey Mouse, my rates are very reasonable. Keep it on the down low though, Disney are being very uncool about it. Next stop, Firestone Depot. Time to gather up your stuff. <laughs> Who's getting off the bus? Thanks for watching this video about the early versions of game characters that were snuck into the actual finished games as Easter eggs. We hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it was interesting. Maybe you learned something. Um, if you'd like to learn more things about video games, then why not check out this video from Outside Xbox, which is about all the safe houses that became unsafe houses. And maybe this video from Outside Extra might teach you a thing or two. And it is about something also very worthwhile. Hmm, don't know what it is because I didn't, I didn't check, but there's a headline. I'll probably read the thumbnail. You can read. <laughs>